Okay, so we're looking again at um, estimating the VIX. I'm using Arnold and Earl, um, 2007, uh, their SSRN paper. They set out a CBOE example, uh, which was um, distributed in 2003 by uh, CBO. And they then set that out uh, manually in an Excel spreadsheet. And I tried here in this instance to follow in line with their Excel uh, construction. So again, in terms of the estimation of the uh, VIX index, um, an important facet or an important element in terms of the estimation is this, um, we have a 30 day window, but um, we don't always have a, 30, a an exact 30 day uh, expiration period on to, until the option is uh, settled and so normally we're interpolating between a shorter and a longer maturity a T2, a longer maturity is T2 and a shorter maturity is T1 so just to outline in terms of how we estimate the VIX okay, how we take our sigma squared 1 or sigma squared 2 and then interpolate with the relevant time periods and um, we have to set this out then in terms of a t1 and t2 so our t1 here um, is equal to 0 0.04 and t2 is equal to 0 0.177 and uh, normally we don't break when we estimate options or run valuations and options or even implied volatility um, we normally are comfortable it just um, based in terms of number of days in a year but of course because the we're so close to expiry we really are looking at very short-term contracts for the calls and the puts the, the the near term and the far term are actually very close 16 days and 44 days and when we get down to such um, reduced number of uh, uh, maturities and um, hours and minutes then become important and so in the estimation that we present here, we break it down uh, in terms of um, constructing it per minutes. Okay, so in the previous video, I was setting out how, why is this relevant? Uh, what this basically constitutes here is an estimate, if you like, of if we look at just this element, hours multiplied by 60 minutes, and then seconds divided by 60, right? Um, when we... Um, if we worked out just basically hours, if it's currently 8.30 in the morning and there are um, minutes, and if, if we were to represent eight, eight and a half hours in terms of number of minutes, um, that would be equal to, let's just go back, that would be equal to 510 minutes. Okay, so... 8.30 in the morn morning has to be converted into minutes. It's uh, 510 minutes. How many minutes remain then for the rest of the day? Well, we take 510 minutes from 1,440. Uh, that would give us 930 minutes. How many minutes in a day? Number of minutes in any given day would be equal to uh, there are 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. So 1,440 minutes in a day. So taking the difference between that 8.30 and the number of minutes entirely in the day would bring us to the outstanding uh, minutes um, from 8.30 until 12 o'clock that night. So that's why that's relevant. Okay, um, and then we've got to convert that into um, take those minutes and we add 510 on, right? So we subtract our 510 minutes from 1440 that would give us 930 we then add 510 on seems a bit bizarre but the reason why we're adding 510 it's just understood that when the contract matures over the 16 day span or at the end of the 15 day span it'll also expire at 8 30 in the morning so it's just a coincidence that the current time period is 8 30 we're assuming, uh, and this would have been true in 2003, um, uh, when this uh, example was developed by the CBOE, 
that all settlement was at 510 okay so in the more elaborate example that cboe distributed in 2018 right the time period uh, the data was a lot more complex right um much bigger scale in terms of the, the data and it was possible to have an 830 settlement at 830 in the morning that's possible but also there was a three at a, a three o'clock a p.m. 3 p.m. settlement also as well uh, and so 510 uh, wasn't um, a standard feature here okay so what we're doing here is we're finding the number of minutes remaining in the day we're adding 510 on to say okay in the final day how many minutes are incorporated in and then we divide that by the number of minutes in the year if there's 1440 minutes in a day multiplied by 365 we convert this to a number of um, into years if you like and then the last thing we do here is we say b5 minus 2 because we're shaving off if you like the first day and the last day of the contract and then how many days in between so we take uh, 2 from the 16 and that would give 14 and 14 divided by 365 is is kind of uh, representing that time 14 days if you like in terms of a year so 14 divided by 365 uh, is a, a, an annualized figure okay so we have t1 and we have t2 and for 16 day with 830 where the current time is 830 and 830 am is settlement uh, the an annualized figure for t1 for the first maturity of this um, chain option data would be 0 0.041 of a year and for this 44 day contract that's 0.1178 and we go to minutes just to get the precision okay so um i might just gloss through this a little bit um and just uh really just note okay first of all the the data that we're given is here is given here in the box and then it's important that we estimate in terms of implementing um at both f and estimating uh, the this q if we have a look here the midpoint of the bid ask for each of the options with the strike prices if we're to identify f and the out of the money options because of these out of the money options for both the put and the call uh, we've got to identify f which is a f Again, I, I took this from the 2018 CBOE example, but it's the same notation. We have to uh, identify the forward index level desired from the option prices. Okay, so as an input into our final VIX estimation, I need to get sigma squared 1, sigma squared 2 to estimate sigma squared 1. Uh, and sigma square 2 I initially have to figure out well what is F I've got to get the mid price of the options they're available but we've got to use uh, the out of the money options out of the money um, calls and puts and we have to then estimate the uh, change in the exercise so that's typically going to be 25 here Okay, so as we go through, we can see that we go up in steps of 25, and that's a in this instance, it's a uniform step increase in the exercise price. And then the KI, it, this is this array, if you like, of KIs. Okay, so we, we have different strike prices, so K1, 2, 3, so on, is, are the varying uh, strike prices uh, um, involved. And then we, okay, so... In, in order to make the estimate, first of all, what we've got to do, we've got to identify F. To identify F, we've got to figure out, normally we try to figure out F by finding which, if we take the difference between the call and the put, at what point is the difference least in its absolute level? So we ignore the minus sign, we're always just interested in the um, converted figures all to being positive. That's the relevance of ABS, the absolute. And we just subtract the call take the we have the call and we subtract the put in each case and then at the point at which the call this difference is minimized that's the relevant strike price for estimating f okay now in terms of making that 
uh, running that, identifying that 900 um, here, how do we know that the strike price is 900? Um, Arnold uses this function of um, V lookup, okay, and that's a very handy uh, little tool. Um, okay, so basically it's saying take the minimum value here in this array, which is the 43, and then report back from the box A13 to D23. So take the entire box here, A13 to D23. Take the value in the second column associated with the minimum value here. Okay, so the VLOOKUP is interrogating the entire array and it's saying, look, identify the minimum value, which we have in that array, and then next door in the column two, column two, look for the value um, associated with that minimum value here, and that gives us the 900. Okay, so that's what that VLOOKUP is doing. It's identifying that we have 900. Okay, now in estimating the um, F, the relevant F here, to be inputted in ultimately into our formula here, right? In, in order to calculate that F, uh, we must get the uh, relevant strike price multiplied by E times the interest rate. We have the interest rate before. The interest rate was 1.1625. And we then need to, uh, in our estimation, so E exponential interest rate by the relevant time period. Uh, the time period involved here um, was the T1. Okay, that we had worked out uh, above, right? So the T1 that we had before, that's our T, if we can bring it down, bring up a little bit, our T1 here is the 0 0.041, uh, etc. Okay, so in our estimation, in terms of down here, right, we take the 900, we multiply, which we identified with the VLOOKUP, we take the exponential factor by the relevant interest rate by T1 in the uh, near-term strike data, option chain data. And then we take the relevant uh, call and put. And where's that coming from? Well, again, the call and the put we identify here, but that's coming from another VLOOKUP. Same as before, except it says, look, go to column 3. Okay, so 841 here is the same as 841 here. And then for the put option, same again, V look up, but go to column four, which in this instance, uh, column four would be equal to the 1798, 1798, 1798. Okay, so we have that value then, and then the uh, strike price here that's relevant, okay, is the. Uh, uh, is, is the 900. Okay, so in our estimation, we've worked out, we have taken the raw data, we've worked out where the minimum occurs in terms of the absolute differences. We've got the 900 as the relevant strike. We take and we implement this formula here. We must do the same also for uh, the, the further term, this, the, if you like, the 44 day contract. And we must repeat the same exercise again. Uh, again, we identify with the VLOOKUP, same idea as before. Calculate the differences, identify when the differences are minimized. This is at 123. What's the strike associated with that? We get 900. The call option associated with that, okay, is equal to 3140. The put identified with that. 30, 117, and then we work out, if you like, um, the rel relevant um, F. So we have now F, uh, this is F0, then this is F1. Okay, so we have F1 and F2. Sorry, so this should be actually F1. F1 and F2. F1. F1 and F2 consistent with what we have here. Okay, so we have F1, we have F2, and in the next video I will explain how we estimate this as some uh, 
term here in our estimation. 